Hi Mark, thanks for joining me today. Well, it's certainly been a volatile year for energy markets around the world, uh, a year in which the International Energy Agency has announced the first ever global energy security crisis. So certainly a challenging period, but one nevertheless where the Green Investment Group has achieved a number of, you know, really milestone events. Pull, pull, pull out your highlights for me for the last 12 months. When we gave last year's progress report, uh, we focused on the fact that we were transitioning the business from it being a developer project by project into being an owner of a portfolio of companies that develop project by project. And this year, just gone, has been a year of delivery, of realisation of that, uh, at that ambition and, and that thesis that we had. Uh, through the year, we've seen the creation of Corio, our global offshore wind platform, now with 20 gigawatts uh, in development and a real leader across the world. You know, only created on the 1st of April 2022 and already a very prominent player in, in that space. We created uh, Fleet, uh, our European fleet charging business, um, which was launched a couple of months back. And very recently, we took our global uh, utility scale storage business uh, that had existed in GIG and turned that into EQ Energy, uh, a now multi-regional developer and owner of utility scale batteries with projects you know, very advanced and in construction in Australia and the UK in particular, but really interesting uh, pipelines and development opportunities elsewhere in the world. I would, I would add that uh, in all of that, there's a huge tone of pushing into newer technologies. Um, there's a lot of talk about hydrogen, and we were delighted to see some delivery happen this year when we uh, invested in High CC, our Netherlands-based hydrogen developer, uh, alongside an industrial chemicals business, as, uh, Nobian, as our 50-50 partner. W we think that that is a real pathfinder in the hydrogen space and really signals our intent to be an early mover in, in new technologies. We've done the same thing in, in biogas, uh, announced our acquisition of a European biogas business that we feel has got a huge future. And we, we continue to pursue our distributed generation activities, our e-mobility activities across the world. So uh, I think even in the difficult times and admit, amidst a lot of change for us, in a very tactile way, we've had real progress. And some of that progress has been in the areas where we're, we're signaling tomorrow um, and we're addressing the challenges of, of, of making that real. Delivering the projects and, and technologies um, at scale to, to deliver the energy transition requires expertise, but it also requires mobilisation of capital, right? In large scale uh, mobilisation. Talk to me about the recent move from GIG to operate as part of Macquarie Asset Management and what that means for GIG's ability to deliver on its mission. Our journey keeps going, doesn't it? All, all the years you've been part of the GIG and its history, uh, and here, here's another massive evolution for us. So October last year, we recall that uh, Shamara Wickramanayaka, the Macquarie Group CEO, announced that GIG would move from Macquarie Capital, the investment banking arm of Macquarie Group, to Macquarie Asset Management, the world's largest infrastructure and energy fund manager. Um, and this was our recognition that whilst we'd achieved an enormous amount, I think, using the bank's balance sheet, that to really get to the volumes that we, we want to get to, um, we need to have a broad access to the, the effectively limitless investable funds that the uh, Macquarie Asset Management platform reaches. And as we look at the, you know, I, the IEA announcing that we are going to hit $2 trillion worth of investment per annum through this year, still half of what uh, pundits like Bloomberg would say uh, we need to achieve, but an enormous number just the same. The, the, the basis for that observation on our part seems pretty strong. We want to be a very meaningful part of that $2 trillion. And I, I'm really pleased to say that the progress that we would have hoped to have made by now, uh, we have achieved. And, I, and I'd say we're, we're running ahead of what we w I would have expected us to achieve. Critically, in terms of verifying the observation, that there's investor appetite for these uh, asset classes that we're wanting to wanting to develop. 
there's also investor appetite to recognise that GIG brings something distinctive, that the, the legacy capability that you and I and others in the team have brought together of this balance of great financing skills, but really critically, all the technical and development skills, the niche capability to really understand the assets that we develop and, and, and invest in, is something that's quite distinctive to GIG, is something that can give investors assurance that we will deliver the volume. And because we get in, if you like, on the ground floor, uh, we can deliver the volume uh, at a value proposition that um, is superior to that otherwise available. So a challenging but really successful 2022 for GIG. We look ahead now to, uh, to 2023. What, what can we expect to see from the group? It's really exciting. The rate of progress that we're experiencing already in our transition to an asset management model is super encouraging. We're really viewing our businesses in a two-theme model. One, delivering volume in the established renewable technologies, and the other, positioning ourselves as a prudent pioneer of newer technologies. I should call out first the established technologies where you're leading that globally for us, Ed. Uh, can you talk about um, the things that we already have going and what, 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 what you're going to get done through, through 2023? In the established technology, it's about how we scale up, right? Uh, in 2021, we had a record year for solar installations. Um, we also had a, had a record year for, for wind production. And yet, to achieve our 2050 targets, we need to double what we've been doing on an annual basis. From, from those you know, year on year records that we've been setting. It's all about how we accelerate the scale and the pace of that project delivery. Right. We also will increase our focus on investing in existing businesses and how we transform them and take them to, to another level, right? To, 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 to create even more scale uh, and volume through that model. Right. It's in delivering the green electrons that we can then enable the next phase of the energy transition story, right? You can't produce green hydrogen without having green electrons as an input, right? You can't electrify uh, the transport sector without producing green electrons, you know, to, to, to power um, that transition. I think in those new technologies, which as you say, rely on the established technologies for the green electrons that will drive most of them, I think we're very well positioned and delighted by the investor appetite we see to be part of that that next phase of the journey, that next phase of the transition. This is really reflects, I think, a, a really profound and very admirable um, phenomenon we see in the wider community at the moment. Stakeholders, whether they're, they're shareholders or pensioners, they want to see their money being deployed in a way that's going to address the climate challenge.